Hey guys, it's Jan. We're going to have a little bit of fun today with Docker. Uh, I am by no means a Docker expert. I am just learning a lot of this stuff, but I did find a pretty good recipe that works for doing a node exporter, Grafana, and uh, Prometheus stack. And so I'll show you guys how to do that. I'll go over how to do some Docker with Chia. The thing I really use Docker for in Chia is a harvester. I think it's really good for a harvester because you don't have to like go into all the complexity of installing Chia on a system. You can just run the Docker and it finds the drives and, and harvests away. Uh, so that's that's super easy. And then I'm going to show you one of the Docker applications that I like, uh, not only because I think it's a cool app. Uh, it talks, it's a dashboard for smart for drives, uh, but it's also a nice learning tool for uh, Docker because it has a lot of interesting little things in there you can kind of tweak uh, as far as just adding and understanding how to pass things through in Docker. So I think it is a very good way to learn Docker. So um, with that, uh, let's dive in. If you Google how to install Docker on Ubuntu, you'll probably find a million different tutorials and different methods to install Docker. Uh, you can install Docker through the Snap st uh, Store. Uh, that's pretty easy. You just do, do a sudo snap install docker. Uh, if you want to install it through apt, you could do sudo apt uh, install docker io. Uh, those are the Ubuntu methods and those are the Ubuntu versions of docker. If you want to install docker from docker itself, uh, this is the actual instructions of how to do that. It just basically tells you to remove all the old versions add their GPG keys, you just literally copy paste all these commands and uh, you'll install all this stuff from their repositories, not from the Ubuntu repositories. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, I have no idea if that is better than the Ubuntu version. I do know it works. Uh, so the first thing we can do is uh, we can list Docker PS that shows you all the running services. Uh, I'm gonna actually just kill these cause I'm gonna show you uh, what how to start them from scratch. So I'm going to do a Docker stop Grafana, docker stop Prometheus, and a docker stop node exporter, and then I'm just going to do a doc, uh, oops, docker remove all three of those, Grafana, node exporter, Prometheus. Okay, so now if I do a docker ps, we should see nothing. Now, uh, if you can see here, I actually, um, you know, uh, I, I basically am using a docker compose file. This is this docker compose.yaml. This is the recipe to, to do the Grafana node exporter uh, and Prometheus stack. So if I, if, uh, basically if you can see, I can see the images. I, I still have the images. So Docker image list or LS, I guess, same thing. Uh, you can see all the uh, repositories I have. If you wanted to uh, remove, you can say Docker image remove. Now, generally these, you know, we just do latest. Latest is gonna give you kind of the, the latest version of these images. So that's generally the easiest way to do it. Uh, you can see here, if I wanted to remove this, I could do it by the image ID, or I could do it uh, by, you know, the name, uh, whatever. I can do these from scratch to see, can show you guys uh, what it looks like. So dockage, immer, dockage, docker image ls, uh, remove hello world, that was the, uh, the basic one you run. Uh, and uh, let's see, it's giving me some yelling at me here. Okay, uh, okay, so we're gonna delete node exporter. Okay, so now we have a basically clean, clean slate, right? We have no, no Docker containers running, nothing going on. So uh, what we're gonna do here is basically, I'm gonna cat the Docker compose file. This is what I found the easiest way to run. Kind of multiple Docker instances at once. Uh, you can see here, it's gonna, so the compose, basically you just give it a Docker compose file and it will start all these Docker containers. And so this stack basically contains Node Exporter, Prometheus and Grafana. Now this is like, again, there's like a million different other things you can do uh, as far as volumes and where the data is stored and all this stuff. This is Docker stuff that uh, you can learn online. I don't need to teach you that, but, um, so, you know, obviously the image is where you're going to get the image from the container, the name of the container, restart and let's stop. This is good because then when you reboot the system, these containers will start again. Uh, but this is the most important part is the ports. Uh, these are not going to be able to access each other. And these basically we need to be able to access these ports so we can get the information from the services like node exporter. So you have to open up the ports and in Docker and 
you can see, you know, I think it's Docker. And again, this is uh, network uh, LS. You can see all the Docker networks and you can, if you literally just do an uh, IP config or uh, IP add, you can see all the Docker addresses too, Docker zero and the bridge, you know, the same Docker networks that we just saw. So uh, the way it works, it basically it's, it, you know, Docker goes in its own bridge. It's like its own little switch, like a little virtual switch. So uh, if you do, I'm gonna show you my composes.yaml again. So um, we basically just wanna pass one port through and that will pass it through to the IP address of the host. Uh, so Prometheus, we're gonna do the same thing, except for Prometheus, we have to give it a prometheus.yaml. So you can sh I can see my prometheus.yaml right here. It's super basic, just I have Prometheus and I have Node Exporter and these are the, uh, these are the ports um, the, what I had to found you know, for the Docker containers to connect to each other, I had to change the, the network on this one from localhost to node exporter. Uh, that's about it um, that I had to change from like basically how I would normally do a Prometheus.yaml. Running in Docker was like almost identical. But just besides this, I would normally on a normal container, a non-container version of uh, Prometheus.yaml, I would just have it as localhost or whatever the IP address that the host is. But again, if you just use the IP address, of the host and you didn't pass the port through correctly, then you're gonna have a bad time. Uh, so that's it, uh, the config file I mentioned, you just are gonna use that Prometheus.yaml and then the ports. And then Grafana, again, super easy, it's just gonna create the Grafana image and container name and then same thing. So uh, after you get all that, I mean, once you, you can basically just copy these files over and to a new system and whenever you wanna get this stack up and just do docker compose up and then we'll do the, it'll defaultly just go from the compose.yaml or docker compose.yaml. If you need to give it a file name, you can do a dash F. Uh, and if you, um, you know, if you wanted to give it, make sure it was doing this docker compose. So we could do docker compose uh, dash F and then up, and then we're gonna detach it. So these aren't um, basically in our face. Now, if you don't do this detached, you know, you'll get a bunch of stuff in the logs and all this stuff. So, uh, okay, Docker is just pulling all this stuff down. Yeah, because we deleted the images. If you, if I didn't delete the images, it could have just grabbed them, you know, from there. Now, if I do a Docker PS, you can see all three are running now. Created nine seconds ago. If I wanted to do a Docker logs, see, I could say Prometheus. And I could see that Prometheus is running. Docker logs, Grafana. I can see it's running. Docker logs, node exporter, you can see it's running. Okay, so all three of these are running. So now uh, obviously what we have to do is pull up the little tab here. Uh, I think I had it over here, but uh, we will go do our IP address of the server, which in my case is 116. And then we're gonna give it port 3000 because that's the, the port for uh, Grafana. Uh, the default password, uh, let me see if I can shrink this uh, so we can actually see some stuff. There we go. And I will move this, move this over here a little bit. Uh, okay, so we can do admin. Admin is the default name and password. Skip. No, I do not want to save this last pass. So the first thing it's going to do is say add your data source. So we're going to go to Prometheus and we're going to do HTTP local host dash 9090. Now, if we do that and say save and test. Uh, okay, so, uh -huh. so it's saying uh, local host, I remember um, it's actually not looping back because we have it in Docker. So we actually need to give it the IP 192.168.0.116. Save and test. Okay, data source is working. Okay, and then we need to go to uh, browse general, nothing's there. So we need to go to import a new dashboard. You go with 1860. This is the default node exporter uh, version for Grafana. So Prometheus data source, import, and okay, we have our dashboard up. So um, yeah, it needs basically a few minutes to, you know, it just, it just started. Uh, this is the refresh actually. So this is going to be the, the range. You can see we just started um, I'll make this bigger so we can actually see some stuff here. Uh, but yeah, so this is it. This is the node exporter dashboard. Uh, 
this is actually pretty good for plotting already as is. You don't really need much more than this. Sometimes I go into here, storage disk stuff, and move some stuff around. Um, but this is where you'll find the good stuff in storage disk. Uh, I like hardware miscellaneous. This is all the temperatures for all the NVMe drives and the system. So all your hardware temperatures are gonna be in here. Uh, the one thing, uh, maybe it's in here and I just don't know, or I'm too stupid to find it, is the CPU frequency. So what I usually do is end up just making a new panel and titling it CPU frequency. And if you go down here to the metric, I can select uh, node CPU frequency. Uh, let's see, which one is it? Scaling frequency. Scaling frequency hertz, uh, I believe, is the actual, you can run the queries. Now, if we want to make it a little bit nicer, we can go over here and say units, say hertz. Whoop. I'm trying to uh, make sure you guys can see this over here. So now we have gigahertz over here. Um, you know, operations, we can say aggregations average by CPU run queries. Okay, so now it's going to tell us by CPU number. This is just by threads. Okay, so if we apply it, now we have a little CPU frequency here. This is a nice one to have. I can save the dashboard here. Uh, and that's it. Basically, um, you know, we can you know, run some quick tests just to, sh to show what happens. But uh, this is, um, yeah, I don't know, sometimes things get moved around here in the, the dashboard. Uh, can move them around. But uh, that's it. This is like the easiest way to get the uh, Node Exporter Prometheus Grafana stack up in uh, Ubuntu. You know, using Docker, you could use the same Docker Compose on basically any any system that supports Docker. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, with that, uh, I'll move, let's go to the next one. So I've been playing around with TrueNAS. Uh, it's just uh, migrating some of my stuff from Synology over to TrueNAS just for fun. Uh, I just had an old. A, the A core plotter that I had laying around uh, sitting idle. So I turned that into my new NAS <laughs> and uh, it's been pretty fun. Uh, this is the i7-10700 system. So, uh, so TrueNAS has been pretty fun. Uh, the interesting thing about TrueNAS is um, everything kind of runs through Docker. Uh, it, obviously, obviously all the storage goes ZFS. Um, so obviously this is not good for plotting or farming, generally speaking. It's just good for data protection. ZFS is just good for uh, keeping your data safe. So I have you know a bunch of apps here, but one of the cool apps they have in the app store you have to add the True Charts True Charts uh, um, repository. But there's this app called Scrutiny. You can see here it basically just pulls up a little da dashboard on all your drives and has a history of temperature uh, for all your devices. And you can actually click in here, so I can see here it says, oh this this drive has failed. Um, unfortunately, you know there's still uh, this one actually is not really failed, but. It does have two command timeouts, um, which uh, apparently, um, you know, is one of the things that is a smart predictive fail. If you are getting a lot of command timeouts, like the drive is just not responding, then that could be bad. But this drive has no reallocated sectors, no end-to-end -end errors, um, you know, no reported on correctable. So yeah, this is a pretty pretty clean drive. But uh, uh, this is a really cool app, and I'm going to show you guys. Uh, so that, you know, it's really easy to run through through TrueNAS, but uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to run it just uh, through Docker. So uh, if we go down here, um, you can, so the, yeah, I just showed you the way to run something in Docker Compose. Uh, with this one, we can actually just, I'll show you how to run it just as a command. And so what we can do is basically just, I'm gonna paste in a command here, I'm gonna show you. If you wanna run this just as a command, uh, you can see, we'll, we'll go to the start, uh, but, you're basically just running the Docker container. You're opening the ports. We're going to open port 8080 and port 8086. 8086 is for InfluxDB. It's going to create uh, an InfluxDB and a config file just in a little folder. That's nice. Um, and then uh, the things you have to run, this raw IO and admin, or so you can pass the smart CTL commands through to the container so you can actually get the smart. And then you just add all your devices. It's a, uh, this system I'm showing you actually doesn't have any hard drives in it. I just have four NVMe drives. But if you were to add the devices, you would just add slash dev, slash SDA, whatever. Uh, and so uh, the one thing I'm going to do add to this, because this is copy and pasted from their website. If you go to um, the Scrutiny GitHub, this is uh, uh, just you know, kind of uh, 
where you'll find all the basically has all the examples and all this stuff. Uh, so he just recently started picking this up again, which is really cool. Um, I actually happen to really like this. Uh, hopefully they make it even better. Um, uh, where were we? Okay, so uh, yeah. So the one thing I'm gonna change in the in the example that they have, I'm gonna run it D slash detached because I don't wanna have it in my face and looking at the logs. So, so that's it. You run this command and then we need to know uh, Docker PS if it's actually running. And so we can actually see here, scrutiny is running. And then if we do Docker logs scrutiny, you'll see it's collecting some metrics. And so now we can go back to our uh, browser here and go to our same IP of that server that we were doing, 192.116. And then it's 3000 was the port for Grafana. We are gonna use 8080, which is the port for scrutiny. And here we go. So that's it. You can just basically run a dashboard of all the smart on your system with one command. Um, yeah, it's really handy. You can see these These are my 980 Pros. You can actually click to show all attributes and it'll show all the NVMe smart stuff. Uh, but it'll do it for SATA drives and it will tell you if drives have uncorrectables. It'll have, tell you if drives have reallocated sectors. You should watch my video on hard drive smart if you want to learn about which metrics matter. Uh, but this is a super easy way to run Docker. Uh, and again, it's, um, you know, the, the fun of the, it is basically you know, in this command, you can, you can edit it, you can add your devices, you can, you know, play around with, uh, you know, yet to add you know, a couple things to get the NVMe working. Uh, so I think this is a, a fun one, uh, also another fun way to learn Docker. For the Chia Docker demo, I'm gonna just use a harvester. I think this is one of the coolest uses of the Chia Docker. It's super easy to run. You can run it lightweight on all your harvesters. You don't need anything fancy. Um, again, even you can install Docker right from like the Ubuntu install through Snap. And so you, you can make this super easy and, it'll, and it'll, you can, it's a, uh, easy to pull the latest. So I'm actually running my full node on my TrueNAS right now at home. I, this is not like a real production system. I'm just playing around with this to test. So if you can actually install the Machinaris from the TrueNAS store, which uh, you can see here. Uh, and they do a pretty good job of like walking you through the setup of like your TrueNAS directories and which ones are the farming ones for the plots and which ones your application data and all that stuff. So if uh, we click on this, it's going to launch uh, our Machinaris here and you can go through it. This is just a test thing. I think I have like a half a Chia in here from messing around. Uh, okay, so with that, you can see we have zero plots. This is there's no plots on here. It's a full the full node is definitely synced. Uh, if we check on blockchain, you'll see full node synced. Full full node synced down here. Uh, okay, so what we're gonna do is go back to our Ubuntu system, and we're gonna uh, I have this one in a Docker Compose called Chia Compose. You can name it whatever the hell you want. You can name it Docker Compose if you just want to use Docker Compose up. You can name it. Chia Compose, if you want to not forget it, whatever. I just made this up. So uh, we're going to run the Chia container. We're going to run it unless it stops. It'll reboot. It'll continue after reboot. We're going to grab the latest version, which is it'll grab the 1.5.1 latest is the tag for the latest release version. And we're going to pass port 8444 through, through for Chia. Now the service, you can run this as a farmer, but it's a little bit trickier because you have to Make sure you have the directories pass through for your full node and and uh, you know for um, you know for all the the configuration and .chia folder you have to pass through just to make sure it's not like it's persistent on power cycles and all that stuff. So uh, I think that's actually a little bit trickier than just running you know chia you know install like through apt or the binary. But uh, I really do like running uh, the harvester through Docker because it's really easy. So all you do is give it a farmer address, you give it the port. Uh, you're going to CA is just going to equal CA within the container. Remember, this is your environment within the container. Uh, your keys are going to copy. We're not going to make a new key. We're just going to use the uh, CA uh, from before. It's going to initialize with that CA. Uh, and then plot directory. So if you could give it as many plot directories, directories as you want. Here I'm giving it plots and plots two. And then I'm going to have an info level log because I want to know what's going on. And then the volumes I'm passing through, this would be your mount slash hard drive, mount slash hard drive two, whatever. And then you're gonna map those to plots and plots to whatever directories you have up here. And then I'm gonna say slash home slash jam slash CA. I'm gonna map CA. Remember if for a harvester, you need the CA folder here. If you uh, 
look at the CA, it has all the certifications. Uh, the way I actually got this, remember, I, I'm just copying this from my TrueNAS. Uh, I, I actually just mounted a uh, NFS, um, I mounted an NFS share from TrueNAS and then just copied them over. You could R-sync it, you could SCP it, whatever, but you just need to copy over that folder. That's the only thing you need to run the harvester. And so what we can do is Docker compose and give it a file now to compose and then we can say up and then detach and what it's going to do is create this container chia now we can do docker logs chia and you can see it's basically starting up it's going to copy over the keys uh, it's going to restart the ser service because it copied over the keys it found our chia blockchain version 1.5.1 uh, and there we go we're already harvesting so that took like total of like 15 seconds uh really really handy so now we're going to go to Machinaris and uh yep see it'll this thing uh takes i don't know like a couple 30 seconds to update or something but uh it will uh it will find these plots here in a minute yay and there we go uh our four plots popped up here and we can see we are farming a whopping 405 gib uh, but that's it um Again, I actually use this, the Docker version, to do a lot of my uh, harvesters. It's a really easy way to do uh, harvesting. So uh, with that, hopefully that was interesting. Um, maybe I'll do a deeper video if you guys want to see my, my TrueNAS setup. Uh, I have, I've been having fun with uh, Home Assistant and uh, PyHole. And you, know, you can run the Grafana stack and Prometheus stack super easily on TrueNAS. Uh, it's just right up there in the App Store, so you don't need to do anything special. So, uh, and of course, Flex and BitTorrent. Uh, well, I would <laughs> can't can't uh, not have those.